Hey guys, and welcome to my eighth grade science virtual classroom. Today, I will be giving you a quick tour of my virtual classroom, showing you the helpful resources that can be found inside the virtual classroom, and then walking you through how to create your very own virtual room to help me get to know you better. As you can see here, we have our virtual classroom. In the virtual classroom, there are several links and pieces of information that will be helpful for you in each virtual lesson. On the board here on the wall, you will be able to find information about the day's lesson, including the date, the standards that are being covered, uh, the topic, etc. Most importantly, there will also be a direct YouTube link to the lesson video for that day. On the bookshelf, there are also several additional links that are very helpful for you in using the digital classroom. There will always be a link directly to my YouTube channel in case you need to reference any other videos. There will also be a link on the bookshelf to our eighth grade science website in case you need to reference any information here on the site. There will also be a link to the calendars, the syllabus, my Flipgrid or the Flipgrid assignment for that day, and a link directly back to the Google Classroom assignment for that day. In my, in my virtual classroom, you also can find several things that sort of tell you a little bit about me as a person. Uh, you can see that I love basketball, played basketball for a very long time. Uh, you can see that I have my iPhone here with Spotify opened up because I'm always listening to music on Spotify. Uh, you can also see that it's very colorful and that it includes lots of different science posters and materials. And most importantly, you can see that there is a large Starbucks iced coffee sitting on my desk because I love Starbucks iced coffee. Now, I tell you all this so that you know a little bit about me because I'll be your teacher for the year, but also to give you an example of what your virtual classroom should look like. So to help me get to know you better, since we aren't going to be in person, you are going to be recreating your very own virtual classroom, which will do the same thing. It will sort of showcase your personality with the colors, the things that you decide to include, um, and the items that you include there. So now I'm gonna walk you through how you are going to be able to create your very own virtual room. Now in the lesson for today, you will find this presentation. You will also find a second presentation called Bitmoji Classroom Resources. It looks like this. Now, in the presentation that I'm showing you now, you will see at the end, a blank slide that has already been sized to the appropriate slide size to fill in your classroom. In this slide here, you're gonna use these resources to create your very own slide. Now I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. In this presentation, you will see that there are hundreds of slides that include all sorts of different things that would be found inside of a room. Your job is to search through and find things that you think would be interesting to add to your virtual room. The first step is to scroll down to the background section and find a background for your room. Now this is a live document that I'm constantly updating, so these numbers might be slightly different, However, the backgrounds start right around slide 108. So your first step is to scroll through and find a background that you like. Once you find a background that you think suits you for your room, you are going to right click on the slide and select copy. You're then going to come back to your Bitmoji room. You're going to come over to the bar here and select paste. Once you've pasted, you can now delete the entire slide and you now have your slide where you will be able to create your classroom. Now let me show you how to add different objects into your classroom. So let's start with something simple, maybe a table or a chair. Let's see here. Maybe I think I need a bookshelf in my classroom. Let's start there. So once you find the item that you think you'd like to add into your classroom, you're going to select it in the resources slideshow right click it and select copy. Once you've done that, you will come in, right click again and click paste. Now you have your item in your classroom. When you select it, you can 
select the corners with these blue squares and resize it as you'd like it. You also can select the object until it's surrounded by these blue squares and drag it and drop it wherever you'd like it to go. You will then continue this process, adding and adding whatever you think you'd like to add into this slideshow. Now, once you have your classroom set up, you may want to add other things that are not available in the resources slideshow. Let me show you how you can do that. So let's say I really love football and I want to show football in my classroom. So what I'm going to do is go to the internet, probably Google, and just search up whatever that item is that I might wanna add, football. Now, as I can see, I have lots of different images here of footballs. However, this would look really funny, uh, sort of just floating in the classroom with the turf background. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is remove the background of this image. Let me show you how to do that. So what you wanna do first is save whatever image it is that you want. You can simply right click it and hit save as. I'm just going to call it football and save it to my downloads. Now we are going to go to a website called remove.bg. Remove.bg is going to take me to this website, which will allow me to remove the background from my images, which will make them look more realistic in the classroom. Simply going to click upload, go to my downloads and search for that football image that I saved. There it is. I'm going to select it and what this website will do is it will actually remove that turf background and leave me with just the object that I want. I'm then going to simply right click, copy the image and come back to my Bitmoji classroom and right click and paste again. Now I can resize and move my object as I like. Now your job is to use these steps that I've shown you, the resources that I've provided and other images that you may like to add to create your own virtual room that really showcases you as a person, shows me your personality, the things that you like, your interests, etc. So it wouldn't be a Bitmoji classroom without a Bitmoji. You already have this app and have used it before, but for those of you who don't, let me give you a quick rundown of how to use it for our Bitmoji classroom. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do if you don't already have the app is to go to the app store on your phone and search for Bitmoji. If you search Bitmoji, the first thing you will see is the Bitmoji app. The icon looks like this. Now you can see that I've already downloaded it, but if you do not already have it, you will simply select download. Now, once you've downloaded the app, the next step is of course to open that app. Now, again, if you already have the app, you will see that you have lots of options that already look like your own Bitmoji. If you're new to the app, you will be able to actually create your own avatar, choosing everything from their skin tone to their hair color, eye color, hairstyle, so on and so forth. Once you've created and saved your avatar, you will then be able to look through thousands of different poses to find the one that you'd like to add to your Bitmoji classroom. A small hint here is, as you can see, a lot of them have a lot of text and a lot of uh, different sort of icons on them. So if you're looking for something that just looks more natural to someone that's standing in a room, you can search the word pose and you will be able to find several options here that you can see uh, that don't have the icons or the images that could simply be used as someone who is standing in a classroom, such as this one. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to take it from your phone to your Bitmoji classroom. So as you can see, if you select the icon that you like, you have lots of different options for how you can share it to yourself. What you're going to want to do is choose the mail option and simply email it to yourself. That will likely be to your student ID because that is what you're logged into on your Chromebook. Uh, and you will simply send it as the attachment. Once that's done, you will be able to open the email, save that as an image, and then paste it into your Bitmoji classroom, just the same as everything else that you've pasted in your classroom.